Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the void. I'm player one, and welcome to another edition of Void Inc. Ranks. This one being Yakuza Zero Characters. Now, we are very close and nearing the end of our main series. That doesn't include the, the side, like, completion list stuff. But I will do that later. It will, it will come later. But seeing as I, we are at the end of the story, I think it would be right to do this. Now, I was planning on just doing a straight up Yakuza characters in general tier list. But I saw that most of them didn't really have, like, all the characters or... Eh, they were, like, way too many and they had some weird choices. So, I took the liberty of just making my own. So I believe I have every character you could conceivably want to put on this list. You got all the story characters. You got all the, the real estate and cabaret characters, and I even got some, you know, some goats in there. But we'll, we'll talk about that. Also, ignore this extra Kiryu. I don't, I don't know why I did that. He, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Let's get started. Of course, we got the tears, we got goaded, great. Good, all right, meh, and garbage. And I am ranking this based on how much I enjoy the character. Not like, like as a person, how much I enjoy the character being on screen, doing stuff, right? I feel like that is a good, what's the word? I don't know, but that's, that's my, what is that damn word? That's how I'm ranking them. Okay, so let us start with... Hear you. Also, I'm ranking these just based on zero. This is not cure you from the entire series. That would be very different. This is just Yakuza Zero cure you. And just Yakuza Zero cure you is going in great. You know? This is his origin story, his very first outing. He's not the dragon yet. He hasn't, you know, got all his, his facets worked out. He's just starting. The man is 20 years old. That is a 20 year old man. God. But you know, it's still Kiryu, so he's going in great. He's not goaded yet, but his legend will rise. Now, Majima, Majima's already goaded. <laughs> you know, compared to the rest of the series, he is very different. But he is still goaded. You know, he... He was scorned by his family, his Yakuza family, put in the hole, lost an eye has a very bleak outlook on life. And then he meets the young Makoto. Makoto. And he believes again. He's still waiting for his brother. And I just feel like, you know, if Majima was not crazy, like he is in the future, this is how he would act. Which is how he acts later on. So yeah, he's just uh, he's just goaded. He's just goaded. So now, I specifically did that, and now this is all in a random order. So first up, it came with Awano. What do I think about this guy? Um, hmm. Now we haven't beat the game yet, but I do know the ending, all the ending stuff, and he does show up there. But how do I think about him? He's just like the, the kind of lazy one, he doesn't really try to chase you. He, um, 
He's like the party goer, the ladies man. You know, he's he's in the Yakuza just for the fun of it. You know, he did start with all the fighting and like pride and stuff, and then he lost it. But then he gets it back at the end. I don't know. I think I think I'll just put him high. Good. I think that works. Yeah. Because he's, he's still just kind of, you know, middle of the road villain. Doesn't really do the, all that much. Most of his moments is right in the end. So, yeah. I think that's where he goes. Now on to Billiken, son. Billiken was in a whole two, count them, two scenes. And then he died. But it really gave a whole lot of story to this guy who shows up in two scenes. Like, kind of nuts. He's a detective. His daughter got killed. And then Ishitani, who we'll get to later, then killed said killer. And he kind of, like, adopted him. It's pretty cool how we just got a whole story for a random character that dies, like, ten minutes later. So I think, all in all, I'll put him in good below Awano. I think, uh, I think that works for him. Now, Reyna. Reyna, Reyna. I have things I could say about Reyna, but that's not for this video. That's for later. Yakuza Zero Reyna. You know, she's, um... She's alright. She doesn't really... She doesn't really do anything, she's just there. She's just there to, to put together the continuity, because she's in one. And most of her moments are in one. Like I said, we'll, we'll get there, eventually. I got things to say about her. Alright, but that brings us to Mr. Libido. Uh, Habu is his name. Now, you may be wondering, where do I put him, right? Because he's basically just a big ol' big ol' pervert joke. He's running around in his tidy whities looking for the poon, right? He's going in great. Because, listen to me. He's like that, right? But, when we finish his friendship, he starts, you know, being weakened he like has something wrong with him we help him we get his special drink which fully restores our health that bumps him up at least a tier and basically right you know he's just having fun he's just doing his own thing you know he's uh yeah but he's still a nice guy you know he talks to majima and they're good friends that bond over women and you know you can't really rank him on the same like type of ranking as the other characters but in his own way he is a great character and it's a shame he does not show up ever again rip mr libido he probably died boinkin but we remember him and right, now then, Oda, mm mm mm, Jun Oda, the flip floppy man. Where do I put him? Going through the game, you're thinking he's like just Tachibana's right hand man, and then you think, and then you realize, holy shit, this guy was evil. He kidnapped Makoto in, into human trafficking right and this man sucked he tried to have a little redemption by like uh, fending off Shibusa and it didn't really it didn't do nothing but in terms of how much I enjoy he's on screen I think he's going in good below uh, he's going in right below Alano. Because, like, he's good, but, like, 
when he died, I didn't feel a damn thing. And his one boss fight was kind of cool, I guess. He's kind of a dick. But he's not a dick in a good way that makes you like him. He's just, he's just there, you know? Not really much to him. Alright, now we got Tachibana, he's going and goaded. He is the GOAT. He protects Kiryu, he's just looking for his sister, he dies a brutal ass death because he smirked, he smirked at the crazy ass Yakuza like a badass. And he died too soon. He was just a G. G for GOAT. Love Tachibana. Alright, now we got Sarah. Um, he really was just worked into this game to coincide with one. Because he still doesn't really have all that much of a personality. So I guess I'll I guess I'll just give him all right below Reyna. I still don't know how he lived. They never really he just has a crutch now. How did he live? Uh, eh, eh. But yeah, he's just, he's just kind of there to be there. To have more connections to one. Like, really. So, yeah, that's, that's where he goes. Now then, we have a character that doesn't have a name, but I wanted to include him because he's the unsung hero of this game. The homeless man that lets Kiryu hide out in his, um, the shelter, right? This guy's never given a name, and I don't know why. But you, very early on, when you're investigating Tachibana, you give him a drink, and then he just becomes your bro. Because then Kiryu is running from Dojima, he comes to West Park, He's like, oh yeah, buddy, you can stay in my shoulder. Why not? And then you keep Makoto there. And, you know, he's just a bro. Unsung hero. So I think uh, with that, he'll go above Mr. Libido. It's a shame he never got a name. Or, like, ever showed up again. But, uh, you know, remember him. He is a good guy. Hopefully he got a house after the, uh, after the bubble popped. Maybe. Probably. Alright, now we're moving on to some side side characters. We got Yamanoi from Real Estate. Um, he's really just an old man who is fighting the finance king, right? Trying to take down the billionaires, trying to open up Kamurocho again from the nasty money game. And well, he's an old man, so he needs Kiryu's help. And then he, he pulls out the blicky on the finance king saying like, I should have done this long ago. Fuck you. So he's kind of got the badass streak in him. But he's not really like present in the story all that much. It's really just at the beginning and at the end. Um, but I think... Hmm. Where do I put him? I think I'll put him top of good... Because it really is just like, you know, he's a good character. You know, it's nice to see him on the screen. He does uh, good stuff. So, yeah. And then we got Yoda. Yoda is basically Yamanoi. But even less. He is going bottom of all rights. Because he really doesn't do anything in the story of Cabaret Club. He literally just stands there. That's all he does. They try to give him some sort of backstory with the old man who was his mentor. But even then, like, he... Uh, he doesn't even have any connection with Tsukiyama, who's the main villain. So, yeah, he's really just kind of there. So, that's where he's going. 
Alright. Uh, these guys I'm gonna speed through, because, like, really not much to say about them. Leisure King. I'll put Leisure King above Sarah. He's just a slimy ball. He's a slimy ball. That's his whole character, and then he kind of redeems himself after. And that's it. Really the most basic of basics of the whole Billionaire's Five Stars cast. So that's where he's going. Now we got Shibusawa. Shibusawa is going in meh. Because, listen here. This man is the final boss of the game. He's the final boss of the game. And yet, before we fight him, Kiryu never interacts with him. Never. He never sees the man other than the meetup with all the lieutenants, right? And Shibusawa doesn't show his true colors until we get into the end, and then he starts doing stuff. But even then, he has like... <sighs> when, when we do his final boss, he's like, I want to be the dragon. I want to be the super Yakuza. And it just seems hollow. Like, where was all that passion since the start? You know? It, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't, it seems like two different characters, really. It doesn't seem like it's the same guy. And out of every other final boss in the series, I'm talking every other one, even that guy, you know, that one, he's just kind of there. He has like no personality at all. He's not like, entertaining to see he doesn't you don't like to hate him because he doesn't really do all that much for you to hate him so yeah he's going in meh he's going in meh uh electronics king he's also going in meh he's he was just there like, like really he was just there he was a typical nerd was not really entertaining to see. Media King, on the other hand, he's going somewhere in good. I'm gonna put him above Oda. Actually, no, I'm gonna put him above Yamanoi. I really liked the Media King, because he was entertaining to see, you know? He was doing scummy shit, so you actually wanted to hate him. He was a good villain. And then, when you do the whole reform thing, you get to fight with him, which is pretty damn cool. And yet, you, you like, see him personally get betrayed. And I don't know, that scene is pretty good in the whole real estate thing. So, Media King, Media King's pretty high up there. With all the, uh, all the, the real estate people. So then we have Gambling King, and Gambling King, I really don't have that much of an opinion on this guy. I guess, I guess he was alright. It was the whole old man thing. Gambling kind of added to his character, I guess. Didn't he own the Catfight Club? Is that what it said? He had something with the catfight club. But yeah, I think I think that's just where he goes. I don't really have much of an opinion on this guy, really. Uh, then we have the Finance King. The Finance King can be boiled down to money. Money, money, money. And he doesn't even have a reason like someone else. He doesn't even have a reason for what he's doing. He's just money. So... 
I guess I'll just put him above Gambling King. Actually, no, nah, I'm putting him in meh. I'm putting him in meh. He's just, he's just there for you to finish the story and get Dragon Style. Oh yeah. Yeah, that works. Uh, that works for me. And then we have Marina. Marina basically serves the same role as Yamanoi, but she's way more present and is your secretary. Uh, I'm gonna put her in great. Now the question is where in great? Uh, I'll put her above Mr. Libido. I think that works for her. And you know, she gets a bonus because she's included in multiple sub stories and like side stuff. So you really do, uh, you know, talk to her a lot. And yeah, I like, I like Marina. She's a nice little assistant. And we don't really have much of those in the series, I don't think. I can think of one more in seven, but that's uh, that's about it. Now then, where's Yuki? There she is. Want to do all the hostesses at once? Because I'm really not going to have anything to say about them. Uh, Yuki, she's going in great because she has way more personality than all of these combined. And um, she's going above Marina. And now, you can talk about Yuki more, but this remember, this is just Yakuza 0. Yuki is going right there. We love Yuki, you know? Our funny little clumsy hostess. She is great. I love her. Now then, the rest of the hostesses. I really have no idea where I put them. Um, I... I is meh. Which one is this? Is this Saki? I think the hyperactive one. She's going in all right. Chica. What was her deal? I really don't even remember what her deal was. She's going below I. Um, Hibiki. She was the one with the brother, so that's a little bit more. I guess she'll go. Above Gambling King, and then Mana, who is like the goofy one, she can go above Yoda. That's just my gut feelings. I really could not tell you why, but, you know, they're based on real people. They can't really give them that much. And yeah, it just... Doing the hostess trainings was boring, and their sub-stories weren't really that entertaining, except for Yuki's, because we love Yuki. Uh, so, yeah. I think that works for me. Um, I'm gonna skip her for right now, and then get to the, the five stars. Hino is just a worse leisure king. He's just like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Worse as in, he's a worse person. I guess he'll go right above Leisure King, because he is kind of more entertaining to see. Uh, we got this guy, Mizumura, I think his name was. The old man who mentored Yoda. Uh, he was pretty good. You know, out of all five stars, he probably has, like, the most backstory, besides Tsukiyama. So, I will get him... I will give him a good right there. We have the Club Jupiter guy, who went with Chica. And eh, he's also meh. Yeah, he's, he's just meh. Not really much there. He was army guy. He did, like, the cleanup duty for all the five stars not not really much there to work with I had to eh. 
Alright, and then we have Sukiyama. He was pretty good. He basically was the media king of the cabaret. Where do I put him? He actually had like a whole backstory, you know. The Grand killed his mom basically, and he's trying to now take over the Grand. He has some connection to Majima, that definitely helps. You know what? I'll put him bottom of great. He was a good side villain. A really good side villain. Way better than the damn Finance King. So, yeah, yeah, that's where I'll put him. Now we have this twist villain of the cabaret. What's her name? Katone? What's her name? Katone? I don't remember. It, her. She also had a backstory, so that's a big bonus. Her sister died, so now she wants money. So she's basically Finance King, but actually has a reason now. Um... I'll put her somewhere in good, because I don't like her more than Sukiyama. I'll put her above Billy Ken. I think that that works for me. Yeah, that works. That works for me. Now then, Makoto Makimura. She's coded. Do I need to explain why? She. The whole damn game is centered around her. She gets the most screen time and character development. Of course she's going and goaded. Her entire story, it's so good. She has her moments where she tries to be a badass, you know? She recovers from being blind. That's kind of cool. She's just, she's going and goaded but not above Tachibana. Tachibana's still better in my eyes. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I don't gotta explain myself that much for, for that. Nugget. It's a chicken. He's going and goaded. I don't need to explain myself. Miracle Johnson. Miracle Johnson. The Michael Jackson insert. I mean, he basically acted like Michael Jackson, so that was pretty cool. Um... He's definitely going up here somewhere. You know, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed his sub stories very much. I liked him better than Yuki. But you know, since he is a Michael Jackson, you know, character, he doesn't show up in the later games, which does make me sad. But at least Kiryu had a nice friendship with him, danced with him, made a music video with him. Pretty fun times overall. Now we got the Bontan Hunter, Ryuji Goda. I had to put in these these callback characters just because, you know, just because. Now specifically Ryuji in Yakuza 0, he's pretty good. He is very entertaining. It's really, really funny how he's like 12 years old here. And he, he's built like that. That really is very funny and intimidating. And it works well with his character later. Now, where do I put him? I will put him here. Because he only shows up the two times, in Majima's sub-story and then the end of the fortune teller sub-story. But his old presence is already there. He's already Ryuji. And I love Ryuji. So I can't give him a low ranking, so he's going there. 
Now we got kid ass Daigo. Fucking hate this Daigo. I hate this Daigo so much. He's garbage. Now I know it does coincide with how he shows up later, but he's just a shit ass kid and I hate him. He fucking knows nothing. He's like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so that's where he's going. I hate Kid Daigo. He gets way better, but his first chronological appearance sucks. Now, I mean that by they handle it well, they do it well, but I just hate how he is as a character here. So yeah, that's where he's going. Now then, Laogui. Laogui is a demon. You can't even call him a human. He is a demon. His deep ass voice, he's an assassin. Compared to even other assassins in media, like you got Ezio or you got Agent 47, this guy's fucking nuts. He's basically like Dio. He rejected his humanity and became a monster. Now where do I put him? I think I'll... Hmm. I'll put him bottom of grade. I'll put him bottom of grade because he is like a really good villain. But there's not really that much else to him. He's really just there. He's really just there to act as like a final boss for Majima. And yes, he's the final boss for Majima. For some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, then we got Saijima. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I mean Wenhai Lee. Uh, yeah, he's pretty good. Um, he dies way too early. Um, I'll put him. I'll put him top of good. He's like, he's as good as you can get for what his character is. He really, he's wearing Saijima's clothes. Like, he, I know what you were doing, RGG. I know what you were doing with him, and his his friendship with Majima. I know. I know. And then he gets the damn car bomb. Sad. Yeah, that's where that's where he's going. Now we have Kashiwagi. Kashiwagi in zero. Ah, uh, he's all right. Like this is another this is another Reina, where. They're just trying to retroactively put characters from the future into the game because they were there. But he does get a bonus because he had a cool-ass boss fight, and you don't fight him in any of the other games. So that's definitely a bonus for him. But character-wise, yeah, he's just alright. He had that funny little scene at the beginning when he was eating the noodles. And then he fought Majima. And that's about it. Now, of course, I could say more about Kashiwaki, but that's for later. Way later. So yeah, that's what I think of him right now. Now then, the thumb, Shimano. This man was playing 5D chess in this game. He knew exactly what Majima was going to do and he planned around it. And even at the end of the game, when his plan doesn't fall to fruition, he still is big chillin'. He didn't really take, like, any losses. He's like, they, they, they did it, I don't care. I'm still going to continue being in the Tokyo clan. He's, um, he's pretty, I'll put him bottom of good. He's a really good villain. The mind games he played was nuts. 
but we don't really do much with him in Zero. Of course, we have to wait till later for more to deal with him. But in Zero, that's where I put him. Sagawa. This man is a very, very interesting character, right? Because, you know, all throughout the game is Majima. He's just trying to keep a leash on him. He's trying to be like, he's literally his owner. That's why they call him that. And he's very intimidating in a weird way. Like, you wouldn't think this old monkey man to be intimidating. But he is. He's very intimidating. You know, he, he thought he killed Sarah. And really, he's just tr trying to follow what Shimano is asking because they're brothers for some reason. I don't know. And, um, yeah. And then at the end, he, like, respects Majima. And then he dies because he doesn't show up in anything else. So they had to kill him. You had to kill him. But he was pretty great. He was pretty great. I think I'm gonna put him right below Kiryu. You know? He uh, he really added to every scene that he was in. And his ending is badass. He basically knows he's about to die. Lights up a cigarette and he's like, all right. I'm ready. Bang. And, uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty great character. Now then. Daisaku Kuze. What can I say about this man that has not already been said? We fight him. Five times. Five times. And he just keeps coming back. He's goaded. He has some of the coolest scenes in the game. In the game. The sewer scene alone. I feel like if you show anyone the sewer scene, they're gonna get hooked on the series just from that. And that's because of Kuze. Because of how fucking cool he is. I said it. I said it. He's going there. Yeah, he's just. He's a baller. He's a G, he's a gangster. He is what the Yakuza should be. He takes no bullshit. He just wants to fight. And he wants to look cool while doing it. He just takes the pinky like it's nothing. And then keeps coming for you throughout the whole game. And then you earn his respect. Fucking amazing. Love Kuze. They should bring him back. How old would he be now? Like, ancient? People can live that long. You could bring him back, realistically. Of course, I don't think you would fight him, but it would just be nice to see him. Also, for context, uh, I haven't played Gaiden or 8 yet, so don't tell me if he shows up in there. He probably doesn't, but... Don't tell me nothing about Gaiden or 8, because I don't know them yet. I'm saving them for later. Now then. Pocket Circuit Fighter. No, he's not going to garbage. I love Fighter. He's a goofy guy. You know? He's just a man trying to make his way in the world. With, and his love for Pocket Circuit. You know? Um, he is great. I love Fighter. I'm gonna put him... 
I'm gonna put him above the hobo. He's just a cool dude. He's just a bro you can hang out with, race pocket circuit cars, you know? Not really much else to say. He's just a great guy. And we get to see him way more later. Way later. So we'll talk about him later on. Alright, so now we got the rest of the, um... Well, not the rest, but now we have the mentors. Now I'm not really gonna have much to say about most of these. Uh, Areshi, they're alright. They're kind of funny, I guess. I'll put them there, above Mana. You know, they're just, they're just monkey dudes, breakdancing for money. That's, um, that's it. Not really much else I could say about them. Fei Hu, he's going right below them. He even has less going on, but he has a cool black market weapon shop. And he, like, knows every weapon type and how to use it, so that's cool, I guess. But not really much of a personality, though. At least Areshi goes, Hey, y'all! So, so yeah. Uh, Miss Tatsu. I do like Miss Tatsu. Um, she'll go... She'll go above Reina. Not really much else to say about her. She's just a debt collector. She's a boss-ass bitch. Um, yeah. What else do I gotta say? It's Miss Thoughts, you know? Uh, we got Komoji, the Rush teacher. Man, what do I say about him? I really got no opinion on him. I'm just gonna put him... I'm gonna put him at the bottom of all right. Like, he really is not much of anything. He's a hobo who's doing his punch-out artist thing. And then he gets a house. That's it. It is cool how he's the, like, first punch-out artist of a long line of punch-out artists. Yet, they're not related to him. I think they just saw him doing it and then they decided to do it. So I think that's how it went. Yeah, basically. Alright. Bacchus. I love Bacchus. Bacchus is about on the same, like, really close to Fighter. But do I like him more than Fighter? No. I'm gonna put him right below Fighter. But I love Bacchus. He gets a lot of backstory for some reason. Like, way more than the others. And he goes, Hey, boy! I love Bacchus. That's not even his real name. I don't think we'll ever know. And he's a hobo, but he's wearing the slick-ass suit with the scarf. You know, traveling all over the world. He wants to be a boxer guy. He's like Doc Lewis. I love Bacchus. Going right there. Alright, who is up next? The chairman guy. He's really not even supposed to be like a character. He is really just. He is really just like an outlet for Tachibana to show how much he's betting on Kiryu. Because him himself, yeah, he gives nothing. He's as generic a, like, mafia Yakuza guy you could get. He's just an old man, and then he's never mentioned again in anything. So I bet he had no story. So he's going at the bottom of a map. Literally nothing. Literally a nothing character. You could replace him with a chair. And it would be the exact same. 
All right, who we got next? Oh, brother. We've got the Amons. At this point, we haven't fought the Amons yet. Well, we fought Joe. We didn't beat him. We haven't even fought So yet. And I'm scared of him. Because I know he is. Cannon. How do I rank the Amons? I think they go in good. Their whole shtick is to be super bosses. They're fucking scary super bosses. And they do have a good bit of backstory, being like an assassin clan. Um So basically acts as Joe from the later series, and Joe acts as like a rookie, because he is a rookie here. I'm gonna put so above Katone, Katomi, Katomi, that was her name, Katomi, right. Katone is the Fem C from Persona 3. Hmm. I'm gonna put So there, and then I'm gonna put Joe right above him. Because they haven't really, you know, Joe is a little funny in this game, which he does get funny at some points. He's like, you did understand my message, right? And he completely boinked the message sending. So yeah, that was pretty funny. We'll put Joe right there. Alright, who do we have next? Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. I specifically put this guy in here so we'd have someone to put in garbage. Fuck this guy. If you don't know, this is the guy that kills Tachibana by smacking him in the head with a sledgehammer. Fuck this guy. I'm pretty sure this guy's dead. I'm pretty sure Kuze killed this guy. Because when he slams his head on the ground, a blood pool starts forming. So I think he hit his head that hard. And you know, he's just a freaking scumbag. You fight him at the beginning, and you can put his... You, you throw him out the window, first off. He should be dead there. But then he comes back for some reason. And he, he just joined the Yakuza because he loves torturing people. Fuck this guy. I hate this guy. I don't even know his name. I don't want to know his name. Good thing he's dead. How did you sneak in here? Uh... You're also a scumbag. You can go right there beside him. But you're not worse than him. There you go. Yeah, he, he was just basically a scumbag. No, no, anything else. I don't like him either. But I hate this fucking guy way more. Alright, who's next? The Pleasure King. How did you sneak down here? I thought I dealt with all the... Okay. The Pleasure King. Uh, the Pleasure King makes me feel uncomfortable. Uh... They are... I don't even know. I really don't know. Um, I'm gonna put them in meh. Above the finance, above the electronics king, because I guess they're more entertaining. But they just kinda... Creep me out. With how they're handled. So, yeah. I don't want to talk about them anymore. Who's next? Okay, right, this guy. The the Chinese doctor that knew me. They really ain't got nothing for this guy. That's why the, the damn icon for him has his dialogue in it. Um You were just a rat who snitched on us and then died. He had helped us at the beginning and then he was he snitched on us and died. This guy's also going in garbage. He's going... He's going above Club Venus. You know, he's just a rat. You know? Really, nothing else else to him. Alright, then we got... Oh, Kiryu's Mr. Libido. Okay. He's definitely not as good as Habu. But we do... 
tell him that bisexuality exists, which is pretty base. Um, he's also pretty great. I think I'll... I'll put him at bottom of great. You know, he's definitely not as good as regular Mr. Libido, but he's still a Mr. Libido. He's still got the same thing going on. He's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, who is next? Nishitani. Again, this guy only gets like three scenes. Uh, but he's going goaded. He's going goaded. Right below Makoto. Yeah. He's just... Okay. Spoilers for the future of the series. If you really don't know. He's Beta Majima. He's how Majima becomes later in the series. You know? The crazy man. But I think for, for Nishitani it's real. For Majima it's an act. Most of the time. Yeah, you get his little backstory from Billy Ken. And he's just a very entertaining guy, because he's basically Beta Majima. And, uh, yeah, he's goaded. I love every scene that he's in. Wait, what else do I gotta say? Alright, nearing the end. I put Kazuma here, even though... He's not really in the game. I'm pretty sure this is from one cutscene. This is definitely not Kazuma's game. Not Kazuma's anything. He doesn't get like... I guess we get the whole orphanage backstory, right? Um... He'll go bottom of good. Cause he's, he's really like, not in the game. So I guess that's like the highest I could give him. So that's where I will put him. Alright, next up we've got Shinji. Oh yeah, Shinji. Um, another like, recursive one character they added in here to give some more backstory to. And I love what they did with him. Basically the whole alcoholic dad, no mom, biker gang, thug delinquent, and Kiryu shows him the way pretty good. Um, I will put him above so. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll put him above so. I think that works for him. Uh, yeah. 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 And after him is Koma. I'm sorry. Komeki. Now, of course, I I separated Komeki from the other mentors because he's very different. If you know, you know. And we haven't seen him yet in there, but he is in the Coliseum, and you can fight him again, which is pretty cool. He's. I can't really talk about him much here, but for him here, I'll give him bottom of great no not bottom he's better than Mr. Libido there we go if you know you know but here that's how he is in the in zero I think that may be our no Bacchus is our high, highest mentor okay. all right I'm pretty sure we only got three more who is this Dojima fuck Dojima hate Dojima Ooh, but that's a good question. Do I hate him more than this guy? Not really, no. He's a dickhead, but like... He's really like a squirrely bastard. If anyone was to actually fight him, he would lose immediately. He has no fighting prowess, I don't know how he got to this position, and why no one can just, like, revolt against him? Well, till later. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's just a 
the garbage ass man. I hate him. Hate don't you? All right. Our last serious character, Nishiki Yama. Yodai. Where do I put him? I put him in goaded. I put him in goaded. He's your brother. He just wants what's best for you. I love Nishiki. And I can't really say that much more about him. If you know, you know. I'm putting Nishiki where? I'm putting Nishiki below Kuze. Yeah, that, uh, that works for me. That works for me. I'm just looking my list over, seeing if anything looks weird to me. Yeah, I can move Kiryu up to Godin, but... But only, only to here. Only to here. This is a still zero Kiryu. He's not fully into, you know, his character yet. But he'll, he'll go there. Right. Everything else looks fine to me. So, you may be wondering, who's our last character? Who, who else? You've got everyone. Well, like, most of the, you know notable ones. Do you folks know who this is? I bet you don't, but I bet you can see a similarity here. This is the Chinese edition of the game Lao Gui. For some reason, I don't know why, the Chinese version of the game changes Lao Gui from a demon monster into a likeness actor and looks like your uncle. I don't know. And that's very interesting, but compared to regular Lao Gui, he's not as good. But he, he is Lao Gui, so he's just going one slot below him. Yeah, I just put him in here because I wanted to talk about him a little bit. Because it's very funny that he exists. <laughs> look, look at him. He turns from <laughs> to Uncle Terry. <laughs> and there we go. The complete player one Yakuza Zero character tier list. I am content in my opinions. I think everything here makes sense to me, and hopefully you agree with some of it. If you don't, leave it in the comments. I would very much like to see others' opinions, and see where I stand, because like some of these characters I have not heard anyone else talk about, like, um, like the Chinese doctor. I don't think I've heard anyone talk about this guy uh so yeah there we go um like and subscribe if you would like to i've been player one and i'll see you next time in something else bye bye